Welcome back to my channel and another art journal tutorial. Here's a sneak peek of the finished page. I absolutely love this one. So I am working in my altered recipe binder that I've turned into my art journal and I'm on the back of a page and as you can see there's all sorts of stuff on here and I have collage papers out some of my gel prints that I've had out from other projects now this page was created over time I had these pages out I said oh I'm gonna put them on a sheet so I'm grabbing some blue that has gold and then I've got this kind of pinkish deep violet color in here little bits and I want to use up those little bits so I thought you know what I'm just gonna take them and glue them down and as you can see this I'm doing I'm filming this in the nighttime so you're getting those shadows and I apologize for it but the other option is that none of this is shared with you and I always like to take you along on my art journal uh, journey so I am using Liquitex fluid matte medium giving it a good coat and putting it down now a lot of my bits and pieces I'm getting a straight edge and I match the straight edge to the straight edge and then I'm just gluing it down and I embrace the little crinks in the the texture that's one of the wonderful parts of using collage papers and these bits, you get all that wonderful texture without really working hard. The other thing of using, using your collage papers, scrapbook papers, you could use magazine sheet papers, pages, is that will start your color story. One, you are breaking the blank page and you are starting the color story. And the pattern story because there are little things that might be in here that I will be inspired by and one less decision to make. So it really gives me that jumping off point for the rest of my page. Now I'm grabbing some gesso and I'm putting gesso on the edges smearing just to make it all blend and I've got raw paper underneath there so I want to make sure that that's going to take the medium whatever I throw at it a little bit better I'm just adding gesso and moving forward and this is something new for 2020 I didn't do a whole lot of that before I would gesso the page underneath but I wouldn't do it use it jury in the page and I'm just checking on the what's on the back side that I, if it's already kind of done I don't want to make too big of a mess so the sooner you find where paint has gone now I'm using a stamp and I'm putting some dots and the reason for the dots was that on one of those gel prints on the deep violet one it actually had some dots and that's where I ended that evening actually I did several pages I collage pages down and then it went back into the binder and weeks went by and now we're in April and I have this it's a sink liner and I've used this on my gel plate and I was cutting it down to the 8x10 size for the gel plate and I have the excess and I thought I wonder if I can just use this as a stamp so I brayered on the black paint and I just grabbed this page because it was there and I'm pressing it in and ah I love this oh my goodness it is my favorite stamp three dollar dish sink liner so I stamped it in black and now I'm mixing the deep violet that I that was in that one paper remember how I said that started the color story and I'm adding a little bit more color I'm putting some on I'm taking some off and I'm just enjoying the process of creating at this point I have no set idea about what is going to go on this page or what I want this to look like I'm playing with colors I'm playing with the techniques I'm just enjoying the process
and I'm getting as close as I can to the gel prints that I had on there. Now I'm deciding I need a little bit more blue. So I grab a blue and I wasn't sure what blue that was. And that's often the case when you're gel printing. It, it, the colors mix and blend and you it's really hard. So this is quite a different blue. Wasn't getting the shade that was in the gel, gel plate. So I'm kind of putzing around a little bit. Decide I'm going to add a little bit of black here and there. Just basically saving time while I think. Making it look really, you know, kind of beat up, not so pristine. And all that paint is catching on those collage papers and just giving an effect you can't get any other way. So then I grab phthalo green and I mix it with the blue. And then I'm getting a color that I like. And over top of the blue, where the blue was, I'm just going with this new color. So I've colorized it all to the same. I couldn't match it. So I stopped trying and I created another color. And I'm absolutely loving, 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 loving the look. With the teal and the deep violet and that little bit of blue and the black from the stamp. So I grabbed this, my mark making tool, my very expensive one. And this, you could buy one for three bucks. And I got one for my eight by 10 plate. That's the size of my gel plate. And then I have two others. So you could split this up and share it with amongst your friends, find several of them, even if you couldn't find a $3 one. And then I decide I'm gonna add some white and I'm pressing on that with the white. And I'm just, oh. I'm so in love with this mark making tool. It's just made for an incredibly gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous background. And I was just so happy with it. And I'm just cleaning it. I just play my, spray my Murphy's oil soap mixture on it and wipe it clean. So there is a close-up of the finished background. Not a single stencil was used. So now I'm gonna, I turn myself to trying to figure out a focal point. I did not want to do too much. I didn't want to add something too busy. I love that background. So I grabbed some of my coffee filters and I'm painting them. This one I'm painting deep violet. I'm wetting it, putting the deep violet. This one I had some stamping on it in black that I had done, and I'm adding the deep violet. I'm not exactly sure what's going to work, so I'm while I have the mess out, I'm just going to make several possibilities, which I'm going to later addition. I just set that aside and let that dry. This one I think I bring it back in, and I'm gonna I'm grabbing a stencil at this point and I'm going to do some stenciling on it. Again, I'm keeping my options open, but I'm not sure what I want to do. This stencil I love, it's called Peacock Doily. I don't end up using it, spoiler alert, but I will at some point in time. And what I don't use here goes into my stash and I will be using it. This is the other kind of coffee filter. And it was partially colored, but it wasn't bold enough. So I'm just adding another layer of color on top of it. Loving the combination. So I decide I'm going to do some hearts. And I had this teal coffee filter in my stash. And I thought, oh, maybe I can do a deep violet one and a, a teal one. And that looked not bad, but it wasn't quite the right color of what was in the background. So I spent some time and I cut out more hearts, different shaped hearts, cut out different hearts with different patterns and just play around and try to decide, am I going this way, am I going up and down, or am I going side to side? So after much ado, I decide I'm going to go with this composition. And I typed out the saying, no act of kindness, however small, is ever wasted. And I thought that go went well with the heart. 
Now, the reason I went with basically modeled but plain heart is because the background is so lovely and so busy that the focal image could be the solids. I'm gluing everything down with my fluid matte medium. And since everything that I put on those coffee filters is permanent when dry, it doesn't reactivate. This was kind of awkward so, or off center, so I picked it up a little bit. You do have a little bit of playing time. Now, since that background is 100% just my creation, I did not use any stamps or stencils from anybody else. I can print that as a collage paper. I could take a picture of it and make it into a cell phone or something other. I can actually make a print of that if I want it. It could also be something that I would, I could sell as a digital collage paper. because there's no copyright involved. So now I'm using the floating acrylic technique and uh, night has fallen again, but I am so excited about doing this page that I needed, I wanted to finish. And I'm shading with black around the edge. And I glued that butterfly on there. It needed something to fill in that corner, but I'm really been drawn to the black and white with bold colors lately. It's it's something you see a lot of now with art journaling and I'm just putting my spin on it. It was just a free printable. Apologize for the glare. So I'm just drawing it with the heat tool so I can continue on with my floating acrylic technique. But you can see how that just made the heart pop from the background. If you don't want to do this or can't do this technique, you can outline with a Sharpie, with a Posca pan. Um, that's not my preferred way of it. So I add more and more just to make sure that it's all looking great. Leave me a comment below if, if uh, purchasing digital collage papers that I create, such as the background for this one, would be something you'd be interested in buying. I always like to know what my subscribers think. Outlining with my Sakura glaze pen. This is black. I love this tool. What I like about this page is very little of this page is Re am I using something that I've had to purchase? I'm using mark making tools. I'm using bits and pieces of collage papers that were from my gel prints. Then I decided I need a little bit more white, so I'm using my Sakura gel pen, jelly roll pen. It's a 10 and it's very broad. And this one, if, if you wait till the next day, is permanent. I can erase it right now. And even the first couple hours, I would have a good chance of getting rid of it with a baby wipe. But if I wait till tomorrow, it is permanent. And it's nice and bold. So you do get a more opaque white with it. And again, I apologize for the shadows. I love that faux stitching. I 
and then I decided to do the faux stitching around the outside edge as well. So grab some collage papers, grab some scrapbook papers, grab some magazine pages, pick a couple of colors, collage it down, and begin. Sometimes when you don't have a plan, you end up in a terrific destination. And that was the case with this page. I just enjoyed the process. Close up pictures of the finished page are fall coming. Please do me a favor and go over to Instagram and become a follower. You can find me at Creative Katie. And you'll see what I'm up to long before they become videos. Bye for now.